So in the last episode of Feed the Beast Inferno, we left off with creating some scorched bricks for Tinker's Construct. And in today's episode, we're going to start off with a kind of a different task. We're going to make some unfired clay buckets because this is how we're going to collect up lava for our Tinker's Construct smelter and melter. But while I wait for all of these buckets to finish cooking up, it's probably a good idea for me to go ahead and change these scorched bricks over into seared bricks. And we can do that very easily with our spirit fire we can just throw these guys in and there we go we got ourselves some seared bricks and i think five fuel tanks should be enough let's hope that it's enough now these ceramic buckets are one-time use however the seared fuel tanks actually retain their inventory so we can fill these guys up with lava and then just break the seared fuel tanks and bring the lava up to the surface nice and easy and I'm also going to make sure to collect up some extra lava so we have a place to fish. And now in order to make the seared melter, I believe it is just a U-shaped and seared blix and a seared ingot gauge. Seared melter complete. And that is another quest done. And we get ourselves some seared bricks and some seared faucets for completing that quest. And even though I now have my seared melter set up, we're kind of at a roadblock because in order to move on to the full Tinker's Construct smeltery, we need copper. And the only way to get copper is through fishing. So we need to make ourselves a fishing pole so that we can fish up some copper. So I think in order to make the smeltery controller, I need a seared casting basin first, and I also need some seared bricks. Then I think it's just a matter of putting some copper into this melter. That'll give us 12 ingots, it looks like. Putting down a casting basin with seared bricks inside of it. And then, is that going to do what I need it to do? <laughs> I actually don't know how much this is going to take in order to turn it into a controller. Well, this should definitely be enough this time. <laughs> Perfect. And this should be our smeltery controller. Nice. Perfect. Now I can collect up my reward and put together my full smelter. So now that our smeltery is up and ready to go, and I now have our very first mold that we can make ingots out of, I think it's time for us to add in our iron round plates. And that should turn into iron, which we can go ahead and cast into iron ingots. I guess alternatively, we could cast them into iron blocks, but for right now, I want to do ingots just because that is what I need to complete this quest reward. Also, I got this interval timer from a quest reward that I'm going to add here to the faucet. I don't know exactly how this thing works. I'm going to assume that it works a lot like the timers that I've used before in Vault Hunters, but I'm not entirely sure about that because right now it doesn't seem to be doing anything. Oh! Oh, well, it did something that time, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess it just has to be turned on, and whenever it has that green outline, that means it's working? That, that's going to be my guess. I do need to auto-output out of these things, though. Um, hello? <laughs> you are, you are not what I expected to fish out. <laughs> How are you doing, Strider, buddy? Oh, you are very fast, by the way. Uh, I don't... I don't know that I have a saddle for you, actually. Let me go and see. I may have one here in one of these chests. <laughs> I didn't actually know that I could fish one of those guys out. I know I have some leather. I don't know if a saddle is craftable or not. Uh, yeah, I, I don't see a saddle. Let's see. Can I craft a saddle? And that way we can ride this dude around some? That would be really cool. Uh, looks like it's a mob drop or from a village weaponsmith. Oh, that's disappointing. All right, well, I guess that dude can just kind of hang out around here for right now, and if he despawns, oh, well. Oh, well, actually, I don't see... Oh, there he is. Okay, we're good. 
So the next thing that the quest book has me creating is rose gold. And it's actually a pretty simple recipe. It's just gold and copper in a one-to-one -one ratio. And that gives you some rose gold that you can put into your smelter. It's going to mix automatically. And then I think we can just right click here and we should get some rose gold ingots. Nice. Now rose gold can be used to make a lot of things, but the thing that we are interested in making is this mixing cauldron. And this mixing cauldron can be used in order to make the dark gem. <laughs> I actually have no idea what this thing is or what it does, but it sounds cool. So I think I can just do four nether quartz like this, a redstone dust, and then three charcoal. And it looks like it's working. This should give us a dark gem. Perfect. And it's from evil craft. <laughs> How fitting. Nice. Okay. And that gives us ender pearls and two more dark gems. Interesting. Now this gets us into our build tool. And if you're wondering what our build tool does, it basically allows us to break bedrock because we're going to be spending a lot of time here on the nether roof and having bedrock all in the way all the time is going to be a bit of a pain. So making one of these guys is going to be extremely useful. However, looks like we're going to need some scorched stone tool handles. I'm not entirely sure how we're going to make that. It looks like we're going to have to have magma as well as a flint tool handle. That's not too bad. How do we get magma? A magma cube? That doesn't sound fun. <laughs> oh, we can also do it with magma creams and magma blocks, it looks like. Okay, that, that will definitely work. It also looks like we may be able to make a time in the bottle at this point, which is an extremely useful utility that allows us to store time up and it allows us to speed up machines later on. So the earlier you can get this to start storing up time, the better. We're going to need a glass bottle though. And now we should have everything that we need. Now we just keep this in our inventory. It's gonna store time up and then over time, we can use this stored time to speed up machines. Super, super useful utility. Oh, hey, and I get the panic necklace from that. <laughs> Increases the wearer's movement speed after taking damage. Perfect. Hopefully, hopefully we won't need that much because I, I don't particularly plan on taking a ton of damage, but uh, let's see, necklace slot. Oh, it looks cute at least. Anyway, back to making the build tool. I think I can go ahead and put a magma block in the smeltery and that should give us some magma inside that we can use to pour over some flint tool handles. And that should give me what I need. I'm not entirely sure on that though. I've never done this build tool before, so it's gonna be a bit of experimentation here. Gonna be a bit of experimentation, let's see. Man, it sure does take a long time for that magma to smelt up, but that gives us four slime balls. Okay, and now I should just be able to right click that there. And now what does this do? It looks like this is making a mold. No, it didn't. Perfect. That gave us our tool handle. Exactly what we needed. Perfect. Now I can just go ahead and make another one. And then I should be able to make ourselves a build tool. Perfect. Okay, let's go ahead and head inside and let's do this thing. So this, that, two gold, and then a dark gem. And that is our build tool. This tool is capable of mining bedrock and in portal frames. The bedrock is really what we need though. And at this point, it looks like we're going to be getting into the mine colonies mod. And this is such a cool, such a powerful mod. And we have the Inferno supply camp here. So we need to place this down here in our world and it should give us, let's see, can I just place it like right here? There we go. Yes, and this should give us a bunch of materials here that we can use to build a mine colony or the start of a mine colony. All of these are just useful tools that we can have and use. However, I think there's actually another way that we can build some of these colony structures that we don't have to build them ourselves. And that is with this town hall. And it's going to cost a build tool. It's going to cost a chest, some iron, and some planks. Let's go ahead and get this done. 
Alrighty, super simple recipe is now completed, and this is our first deep dive into the Mine Colonies. <laughs> I'm excited for this, actually, because Mine Colonies is an incredibly powerful mod, and I'm super excited to play around with it. I've never played around with it before, but I've seen some, uh, seen some other people use it, and it looks super fun and super powerful. So I'm excited to play with it myself and just see what all trouble we can get into. So this is the town hall structure and I believe we can just set this anywhere out here in the bedrock. We suggest using the build tool to place the schematic. This will allow you to adjust the position. All right, well, let's use the build tool then and let's see what we can do. Can I show a preview, escape? Right click the build tool on a solid block to adjust the build's position. Okay. I can't actually see the build though. <laughs> oh, that's a problem. Uh, maybe if I put it in my inventory now. No, I still can't see it at all. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm not sure. I can't see what I can't see what I'm doing here. Oh, town hall. There we go. Okay, perfect. Uh, yeah, th I mean, this looks like as good a place as any. Start your colony. Nice. And that is our town hall. Place the town hall using the build tool. With the tool, you can choose the style and position. I mean, I don't see anything here, but <laughs> I assume it's supposed to be supposed to be here. You do not currently own a colony. You are able to create a new colony here. Create new colony. Oh! Oh, it added a fence! <laughs> I love this. I love it. Word is out about a new uh, word is out about a newly founded colony. Soon the first settlers will join your colony if there is enough space around the town hall. Experienced governors can turn off these helpful messages in the town hall block. I, I definitely probably need these messages. <laughs> probably need these messages. Uh, oh, the first settler arrived. Oh, her hello, Carolina. <laughs> How are you doing? Uh... Oh, and you're level seven already. You have aesthetics, dexterity, strength. Okay, you have a lot going for you. You have a lot going for you. Open requests, nothing. Inventory, nothing. What is it now? What is it now? You sound very, 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 very angry. Okay, well, you just hang out here, and I apparently have a lot to learn. <laughs> I apparently have a lot to learn. Oh, wait! Oh wait, I think I figured it out. I have a town hall capsule. I have a town hall capsule in my inventory here. So can I pick this thing up? This may destroy my colony, but I guess we'll see here in just a second. I'm gonna try and pick this up and then place down our capsule for our building. And then we'll replace down the town hall. Let's see if this works. So, and place. Can't my Hey, give me that back! <laughs> you, you stole my capsule! Uh, something is preventing my block position. Uh... Now? Nope. Is it you again? Probably this thing again. Go away! Go, go, Gadget, go! Ugh, okay, fine. I'll, I'll destroy the grass again. I don't understand why this stuff keeps growing back. Alrighty, now let's see! Boom! Perfect! Now we have ourselves a town hall, and I think I should be able to just break this, uh, this deep slate and replace our town hall block, and we should be good to go. I don't have a pickaxe. <laughs> Alrighty, bit of deep slate removal, and now town hall block. Uh, let's use the build tool just to make sure that we, we get this right. Uh, let's see, can I do... Yes, town hall... Perfect. Good to go. All right. <laughs> now these guys are going to come run back over and link to the town hall, it looks like. Okay. That definitely works. And this is the beginning of our mine colony. We got to give these guys some missions to do and put them to work. But wow, this place is, this place is booming. <laughs> Look at all the guys we have already. Oh, also, I do have a saddle. Nice! <laughs> I actually just got this from uh, from a quest reward, so that is very nice. However, 
I don't know that I can. I don't know that I can ride this guy without one of the uh, the fungus on a stick. So maybe let's make one of those real quick. <laughs> no, I don't know why my Strider makes engine noises. Okay. So I feel like I haven't fully explained what the Mine Colonies mod is. So essentially what Mine Colonies is, is the ability to make a kingdom. And in this kingdom, we're going to have a bunch of workers. And these workers we can assign to do all kinds of things, whether it be farming or wood cutting or building new buildings, anything like that is what these guys can do. And we assign them jobs based off of the buildings we have. So right now we have a town hall, which is basically just a hub for other us to use and for them to use as a meeting place but in order for us to get say a builder which will be our next quest that we work on we have to have a builder building a builder's hut capsule and a builder's hut uh, table here then we will have builders that can create new buildings around this area to expand our kingdom it's basically like a super fancy villagers mod. So let's go ahead and get started with a builder's hut. This is gonna be our first mine colony building that we can actually assign someone to. So let's go ahead and get this started. I think we should also, yes, we can get worker where are you scrolls. We can get an iron wand, which I believe can be used for construction. Uh, builder's hut capsule, which will be very useful for setting up a building without us having to actually build it. And then another builder's hut. So we can actually get two builders going here right off the bat. Now, what I have done is I have edited the settings just a little bit inside of our town hall. If we go ahead and access our town hall here, we can go into settings and I turned the worker hiring mode as well as the housing assignment mode to manual. And the reason that I did this is I want to pick which colonist I want to be a builder, which colonist I want to be a farmer, etc. And the reason that I did that is each one of these farmers has different stats. So this farmer looks like is very good at stamina and dexterity, but you know, maybe isn't so good at mana, something like that. So each one of these are going to have much, much different stats and it's best to have our best builder or our best, I guess it would be, uh, I guess it would be creativity probably for building maybe or maybe adaptability anyway we're gonna want the best person for the job to be our builder so now what i can do is just figure out where i want my builder's hut to be and you know what it's probably best for us to make sure that we have some nice area for roadways. Okay, so just to give a bit of a tip on how to use the build tool, because it can be a little bit confusing when trying to use it alongside the capsules, but I do have my builders now in place and we can assign these guys. So the way that you use this build tool is you right click on the ground with it and you can see it's going to auto assign the builder because we have that workbench in our inventory. Then we can go ahead and move this around however we want to. However, one of the biggest things that you really want to pay attention to is this level right now we're going to be making level one structures because that's all we can afford however eventually you're going to be making these big level five structures and they are much more intimidating and require a good amount more room at least as far as headspace is concerned so what's best to do is make sure that you are positioning your building so they're not too cramped together whenever they are fully upgraded another thing is it's best to go ahead and position your build like this with the builder and the build tool like this so go ahead put it on level one and then once you have this kind of ghost block then activate your capsule line it up with the ghost blocks throw it down and then go back to your build tool in order to place your builder's hut. It makes the process a whole lot easier and makes sure that you get everything lined up. Just small, useful tips. So now that we have two builder's huts set up, it is time for us to assign ourselves a worker to this area. So it says some builds have extra help pages. Here you have an overview of the combined building inventory. Make sure to check out all the buildings pages. All right, let's just click understood. We're gonna go to manage workers and we're gonna see what worker would be best to take this role. And it looks like uh, Jason M. Hammer is going to be pretty good because he has adaptability of three. Uh, it, it looks like the thing that you need the most of for each 
uh, job is going to be highlighted. So in this case, adaptability is going to be the biggest for the builders. And it looks like we also have Linda or Lydia that also have, has adaptability of three. So we will hire Jason over here and then we'll go to our other builder's hut and we will hire Lydia as our other builder. And we should be able to find them around here somewhere and they should have a brand new skin on that makes them look a little bit more like a builder. So manage workers and then hire Lydia as our other builder. Now, where are they? Aha, and here we go. This is Lydia. And as you can see, Lydia now has a little hammer and a little workman's hat on. <laughs> nice. So now Lydia is our builder and she will start making requests and has an inventory and such like that so that she can build brand new buildings around our area. Absolutely perfect. So after reading a couple of guides in the quest book, I was giving a couple of housing capsules that we can use to make houses for our villagers here. So let's go ahead and let's expand our colony immediately. So one thing that I forgot to mention with placing down any of the additional houses or huts is you do have to configure the build options. So you right click on whatever the work table is and then you go into build options and then you select a builder to come and work on this. So we're going to click build building and this builder should hurry over here and start work. However, this building is completed. So all she's really going to do is come and check to make sure that it's correct. If she needs anything like torches or an extra block, then she will put in a request with our clipboard, which I guess I should also cover in order to assign your clipboard to your colony all you do is you shift right click on your town hall just like this and it's going to note requests on the clipboard so we can check it from anywhere and if she needs anything in order to complete that building then she will let us know and tell us hey i need torches or whatever and it looks like she did just start work on the house and she should head over there in order to check and make sure it's done correctly in just a second I'm gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing for Jason for these other two houses. So somehow I still have two villagers here who do not have a home to live in. So we need to rectify that. There's a couple of options. We could either build two more houses or alternatively, I could make a tavern because I think a tavern allows for four people to live in it right off the bat. So what I can do is make a barrel and then some planks with our build tool and get a tavern capsule pretty quickly and that'll give us not only a place for those guys to live but also a tavern will attract outside visitors and outside visitors are actually a much higher level than these guys who just show up so it's going to be pretty useful to have that going very very early on so we need a barrel which i believe takes slabs i'm not entirely sure i forgot the barrel recipe to be honest let's see what's a barrel there we go so barrel and then we need a tavern so just like this tavern block perfect now with that we should get all of the crust rewards which includes the tavern capsule let's get this thing set up and kaplooey <laughs> tavern built and then i should just be able to use my build tool in order to place down the actual tavern block go ahead and pick up that deep slate nice and free and i think i should just be able to assign one of our builders to this and it should be done almost immediately. Jason is closest here, so let's go ahead and have him pick up this work. And now that the tavern is completed, I can go ahead and s assign our last two villagers to this area. Manage housing, and we will do all of our homeless people right into here. Nice. And you know what? I think that this is a good starting place for our mine colony. We have gotten a lot done in today's episode. Many houses, the town hall, as well as the tavern. And you know what? We have even more to do. We have things like a hospital to build. We have things like a warehouse to store our goods so much. This is such a powerful mod and I can't wait to get more into it. But anyway, that is going to be it for me today, ladies and gentlemen. I do hope that you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like on the video as well as if you're new around here, be sure to subscribe. But that's going to be it for me today. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. You guys have a great day.